speaker, is one of the early WordPress adopters. She created her first website on WordPress.com back in 2007, got invited to a WordCamp in 2013, and quickly found what I lovingly refer to as my kind of crazy, our kind of crazy. <laughs> um, she has spoken, in the meanwhile, at dozens of WordCamps, is co-organizer of two of them in California, and leads the international marketing team of WordPress. I am proud and thankful to call her a friend, <laughs> even living at the other side of the world. And I learned quickly that one of her core values is empathy and being focused on long-term relationships even when that means tackling conflicts heads on, which is exactly what she's going to talk about. Give Bridget Muller a warm applause because you're in for a real treat. Thank you, Bell. Thank you, Bell. So I'm going to tell you a tiny story. <clears throat> so I was married for quite a while to a coach, and his father was a coach, so the whole family were coaches. The uh, the children went to the Olympics. Actually, my sister-in-law won for diving in 1960 and 1964, silver and bronze. Uh, she would have won gold, but she had an attack of appendicitis on her way down. That was not awesome. So when you're around sports people, you kind of have to learn to fit in, you know? And anytime something would happen, I was like, oh, Mercier, what are we going to do? He said, we're going to punt. Right? So I was trying to think, what could I talk to my duchies, you know, that would kind of like have one meaning here because of football and another meaning at home because of American football. So I'm sure most of you know what a punt is, but in American football, it's all about gaining ground. And you have four opportunities every time you have the ball. Right, And if you're at your fourth opportunity and you haven't gained enough ground to have more opportunities to gain ground, because fo American football is about war. It's an entire analogy about war and gaining territory. So if you have this last opportunity, what are you going to do? You're going to do whatever it takes. And whatever it takes is punt. It doesn't matter if you're 85 yards from the end goal, you're going to punt. You're going to do something, something that might give you some kind of an advantage. And so if you don't understand sports, then you're not gonna understand punt. I'm like, punt, what does that even mean? And so many times we have jargon in our world, whatever the industry is, right? So I spent a lot of time in construction and we talked about alligatoring and ponding and all these words that you know from another context, but all of a sudden you put them in, in an industry focus and you're like, stop. Sorry. So I'm, I, um, I have a part-time job with Serbians, and so sometimes the Serbian comes in and it's like, what? Stop? So SAS, you know, it's software as a service. It's also a JavaScript compiler. But that's what I think of. SAS it, you know, right? How about a hook for fishing? How about rest? I love naps so hard. I take 20 minute naps every day at 2.30. 2.30 feeling is a real thing. It's a circadian rhythm. You can't, you can't hack your body, people. And of course, my favorite, Jason Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just want to say, like, for me as a marketer who sometimes used to dabble in what I now know is not code, but markup, a long, long time ago, back in the early 2000s when I took HTML classes and um, stole some code from CSS Zen Garden that I'm, for a website I'm not even proud of. Um, and I'm never proud of any website I do. I just like, 2017, yeah, let's publish. So like marketers sometimes are looked at as developers as the soft side of Sears or the soft skills. Like you guys, are, in fact, I hear a lot, you're not technical, We're, you're marketers. And I'm just like, <clears throat> you know, like, uh, marketing is a soft skill, but that soft skill is a social science. 
it's a social science, right? So I have it like you can you can do marketing from a total data specific uh, set. And I was talking to some of my friends yesterday, yesterday at the dinner. And I'm like, okay, yeah, you can look at data, but data is an autopsy, right? Data is a picture of the past. Without the story around the data, without the context of the data, you don't know what it means, right? And you could have good data and bad data, but without the without without uh, the story around the data or the context of the data, it has no meaning. So, in order to be effective with marketing, you have to go beyond beyond the computer and what the computer tells you what to do, and you have to interact with humans. So. I approach marketing, especially relationship marketing, which is what I specialize in, from a social science standpoint. So I want to talk about Diane Fossey. <clears throat> and I want to say a disclaimer right here and now. I am not comparing developers to primates. <laughs> I love social science. I watch nature documentaries to sleep. Um, and we can learn a lot from group dynamics by watching other um, primates. So Diane Fossey was a researcher. Uh, she has a book that's really famous called Gorillas in the Mist. I watched the movie instead. Uh, with Sigourney Weaver, it's pretty good. She dies, but it's fine. Like that's, <laughs> Thank you. I mean, you know what? I would rather know ahead, and it's a true story, so you might have found that out anyway. But the, the point is that her actually and Jane Goodall who studied chimpanzees, did it in a way that was unconventional. And the, originally, Diane Fossey was supposed to go to study the mountain uh, gorillas. This was a passion of hers because she was asked to do a census. One, two, three, four, ten, you know? And, and so that's all she was supposed to have done. That's it. Just count. That's data. That's Google Analytics. But she did something beyond that because her training was occupational therapy. She decided to do something a little bit unconventional. And there was nobody there to correct her because she's all the way out in Kenya or wherever she was. I forgot. Details. Whatever. Go look it up on the internet. And so she went from afar. And every day she would go closer and closer and closer and observe the mountain gorillas. And then she decided. You know what? I, she sees who the chief was, or the, the, tri, the troop leader, right? And um, she would realize by watching the group dynamics that if he came around her, she needed to bow and deference and look away, right? Because when you make eye contact in a primate situation, that's aggression. So aggression is matched with aggression. So she did this amazing work because she observed, she respected the community that was there, and then she assimilated with them. She, she just mimicked their behavior. And because of that, she was completely accepted by the mountain gorillas and was able to do amazing work that is now a foundation. So <clears throat> you can make a persona all you want, but the persona doesn't Really. So I'm unconventional, like Dan Fossey. And um, I think that personas are stereotypes. And sometimes they're true, because sometimes stereotypes are true. But we are people. And as people, we grow and evolve and change. And so we can say, as I was talking with my friends, Uh, we'll get to that in the questions and answers. So, but since you interrupted, I'll answer. A persona is, what I was going to tell you is, what we do is in marketing, we have this like framework. Like you would have, um, like I'm going to build this website based upon Genesis or underscores or something like that. And so um, what you do is you have this persona guides the way you market. Like here's Bob. He's 25, lives with his parents. He spends time playing World of Warcraft. Um, he likes craft beer, um, science fiction, um, Comic-Con, grunge metal, um, a really hard coffee, 
and um, delivers pizza during the day, right? That's Bob. And so be knowing who Bob is and what his behaviors are, we can market to Bob. Well, in my conversation with my friends last night, I was trying to explain this and they go, well, what do you mean? I go, well, your own, your own, sorry, your own rhymes, rhymes with maroon, your own. I said, do you play World of Warcraft? No. Not anymore. Are you 23? No, nope, 27. Do you live with your parents? Nope. I live at home. I have my own business. I'm a systems administrator. Okay. Do you like craft beer? Nope. Not anymore. Right. Yarun maybe was Bob, but he's not Bob anymore because he's progressed in his life. So if you're marketing to Yarun like he's Bob, you're losing. He also, his favorite movie is not Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Star Trek, or The Avengers. His favorite movie is Shawshank Redemption which is an American story about, um, you know, just like, well, obviously redemption. So like you're just, <laughs> but it's, it's one of those American movies, like in America, we love the underdog and we love it when they can stick it to the man, you know? So I totally did not expect a 27 year old Dutchie. Sorry. He's from Brussels. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, um, uh, from Belgium that he would, be like totally into Shawshank Redemption as his number one favorite movie, right? So if I'm trying to market to Yarun as if he's Bob, I'm off. I'm, I'm losing it. So what I started doing to prove my point is, um, I decided that, okay, here I am. I'm a marketer. I went from being a blogger to, um, you know, all of a sudden I'm doing social media for, uh, WordCamp. And I was trying all these things that I thought would work because I thought I knew men, right? Well, this is all men, so it's going to be easy because I was doing construction. So easy, easy, easy. But then I was like, something's not working because everything I know that works is not working. And so I said, I said to my friend, Alex, I said, here's the thing. There are jokes. There's inside jokes, right? And so inside jokes indicate some level of intimacy. Because you don't joke with somebody you don't know, right? Like now we call um, Brex Bob because Bob said, I mean, because Brex said, I am Bob. <laughs> so you can tease him about that later. But he's giving a talk in Dutch. Um, so now we have an inside joke with him, right? But that's because we have a certain level of intimacy. So I was saying, I know that there's inside jokes. So I know there's conversations being had, but I'm not seeing them in public. Now, this is before I knew there was Slack. This is before I was going to WordPress meetups. And so I said, this is like the giant pandas. You know that they mate because there are more pandas, but nobody's seen it happen and it's never been recorded. Again, with the social science and nature documentaries, right? But in my mind, because I love a good analogy, I thought, I am missing something huge here because I'm not getting the context and I am not understanding my audience. So if you don't interact with your audience, you're never going to understand them. So what I said is, okay, I'm going to go to meetups and I'm going to make a commitment to every other month going to a developer's meetup. And then I'm also going to go to developer talks because even if I don't understand it or have zero intention of ever using any JavaScript library ever or building a plugin ever or ever building another website ever, 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 I still can understand the strategic implications of what each tool does, what it means, why people are more interested in React versus Angular versus Vue, how that works with Gutenberg and the way things are changing uh, in WordPress, backward compatibility. Um, you know, those kinds of things are important because they're important to our customers, they're important to our audience, they're important to our community, and they're important to our culture. And about 90% of my friends are developers. So even if I just want to be pals and joke around with them, I still have to do this. It was funny because when I was working at Give, one of my coworkers, um, Kevin Hoffman, said, your analogies are getting surprisingly accurate. I'm like, I read your tweets, Flexbox. I know what's going on. <laughs> so, you know, you, you don't really know your audience if you don't interact with them. 
because you stereotype them. So go beyond and interact because personas make presumptions and presumptions are stereotypes. And we are in an inclusive community and you are not you and you are not you and you are not you. Right? Are you all individuals? If I started pulling you on things, your tools, your workflows, the, you know, some people like PHP code sniffer. Some people like PHP storm. Your IDEs are different. Your operating systems are different. You like to work in your shorts. You like to take a shower first. Some people want to work in Bali. Some people want to work in a co-working situation. Everybody has their own preferences and styles and things that matter to them and things that make them excited and things that, that tell them who they are and what makes them feel belonged and, and loved and cherished and all of the things that make a community an actual community. And you can't have a community without empathy and you can't have empathy without understanding. And you can't have marketing without empathy because otherwise you're going to lose it. You're going to be way above here, way. You're going to, you're just going to, you, you're going to miss it because you're not going to connect. So social observation affirms and corrects personas. So, so observing. So that's the thing. So let's talk about this. So how can you observe your audience? How can you do that? So like I said, for me, I'm a marketer. So I decided I'm going to go to the developer meetup every other month. And I'm going to go to developer talks. It means listening. And a lot of times what we, what we don't do is we don't listen. We like to talk. We're all very smart people. Um, we're part of the smartest people on the planet. We're building something amazing. You're giving away all your intellectual property for free, which is something I had a really hard time accepting as a writer. <laughs> And as a songwriter who has copyrights, it's like in my brain, I'm like, what do you mean? You're giving this away? Why? But then, of course, I've turned, I've turned the way and I'm like, oh, open source, the free and open source movement. This is awesome. You know, peace, love, and WordPress, right? So, <laughs> but I did. I was like, wait, wait. <laughs> you, you mean you're writing this and you're giving it away? They're like, yeah, you just fork it. I'm like, so what do they pay for? Like, support. Like, stop. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, my brain couldn't handle it, right? But that's once I've observed it and seen it happening, then it's easy for me to respect something that I can watch. It means being quiet a lot of the time, which for me is pretty hard if you've ever gotten in a conversation with me or. <laughs> had me interrupt you while you were speaking. Respect doesn't happen unless we establish that empathy and that relationship. So I started doing this by asking questions. And at first, especially in the developer meetup, I was really shy. But then I couldn't take it anymore. I'm like, OK, what is front end and what is back end? And if, what is the WordPress dashboard? Is that like Middle Earth? I don't understand. Like, Because it's none of those things, right? So people were like, OK, we'll tell you, right? So if you ask a question, not to be like, dah, 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 but you're like, can you help me understand what the strategic reason for a custom post type? Like, why would I bother doing that? Why don't I just make it a regular post type? And then they'll go, blah, 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 blah. This is why. Gravity Forms does this thing. The user can put in you know, information, and it's this other kind of thing, whatever, whatever, OK? So that's what I'm saying. Strategically, I get it. Like Sometimes it serves the purpose of your website, because a website is a tool. We like to build it, and we think this is great. Like construction, we build a building, but that's not the end of it. The building is meant to be used, occupied lived in, perused, wandered through. And so you guys are building infrastructure for people to communicate with each other and have relationships. So for me, I'm like, oh, that makes total sense. You know. And so as I started asking questions and respecting the people I was talking to, guess what? They started respecting me. So I didn't have to say, 
listen, people, you're the nerds. I'm the marketer. I tell you what to put on the website and don't ask any questions. Just get it done. Because that's how it happens in companies. Real, in the real world, <laughs> which is not the WordPress project, right? You tell IT what to put on the internet and they do it. In WordPress, you ask super nice and through a meta ticket and maybe it happens and maybe it doesn't. <laughs> Right? I'm just saying, but it's different. But you have to have that respect. But I, you know, I can't just come in here and go, I'm marketing. Do this. You know? It doesn't work like developer, develop. Uh, I first had a, when I first came, I came from construction, so I heard the word developer because that's the person who buys property and builds buildings on it. <laughs> like, in my world, right? So it's all about respect and learning and observing. Observing means being quiet and watching. Observing means taking notes. Oh, so like if I'm in a meetup and somebody's talking, I watch to see when Jono's talking, I watch to see who looks at him, right? Oh, they're all looking at him. I mean, who's the leader? Who's the silverback mountain gorilla? Like, are they nodding? Is Felix nodding when Jono talks? Or is Felix going? It's Jono again. He always says stuff because he's English, you know. <laughs> or even when I was talking to Felix in Seattle last year about some issues I had on track and in the culture of track, he said, Bridget, there's nothing against you. They're just German. Like, they're just developers. <laughs> they're just straightforward. It's fine. It's not about you. They don't even know you. <laughs> they don't care about you. It's fine. And I went, oh, see, I didn't, I put my context onto something that was foreign to me because track was foreign, right? Being part of make WordPress was foreign. So even though I had these friends, they were all super local. They weren't uh, multicultural. They weren't multilingual. That's a whole nother dynamic than just uh, diversity in my own city, right? Now, now here I am in Europe working in a global economy with a global community who's iterating and communicating in several languages with several different translations in their mind and cultures that go along with it, right? So it goes back to observe, observe, and then respect. And after you have that, then you can assimilate. And I know that maybe this is a hard term for a community that celebrates diversity, but the assimilation is more in the acceptance of the diversity. It's more in how we behave with one another. It's more in embracing um, the internal social structure. Like Marike was talking about the internal linking structure. In social groups, you have internal social structure, which sometimes we call politics out of frustration. But the truth is that the silverback gorilla is the silverback gorilla. And if you're going to piss him off, there's something bad that's going to happen, right? You're, you're not going to be allowed. It's like the snow monkeys in Japan, which I super want to see. The snow monkeys, so here's the thing. The snow monkeys are the primates that live in the most cold temperature besides humans. And they're in the mountains of Japan. You can watch a whole documentary on them, narrated by Liam Neeson. Swoon. And so anyway, the thing is that they have these hot springs. There's actually a zoo you can go to in Japan if you want to. And if they have to go down to the hot springs, and at the hot springs, that's where they do their grooming. And so when you're grooming, um, you know, first they get all that protein and it's all disgusting, eating bugs or whatever. But the one who grooms lowers their cortisol levels, which is a stress hom hormone. And the one who is groomed also has lower cortisol levels. Which one do you think has the lowest cortisol levels? The one who grooms. The one who grooms. <clears throat> That's correct. So being and interacting with other humans in a physical space is very important and not in a breach of code of conduct where I'm being just normal, like <laughs> shaking hands with the speaker, good keynote. You know what I'm saying? So that's just normal. Now my cortisol went down, right? I give a hug, then my oxytocin goes up. Not oxycodone, oxytocin. <laughs> it's because all of this is brain chemistry. And so this computer is dehumanizing. 
like he was talking about, he totally prepped you. I was so excited. It's like, yes, because the thing is we forget. That's why being and observing and assimilating in person makes a huge difference because if I interact with somebody in a text only basis, like on Slack, asynchronously, which is so awesome, um, I lose all of those microfacial expressions. I lose all of the body language. I lose the tone. You lose 85% of what makes communication communication. So it's so important to attend meetups. If you're a marketer, if you're a developer, I would say the opposite. Um, go to, I'm sorry, to attend developer meetups if you're a marketer, if you're, or developer talks. If you're a developer, it would go the other way around, right? Attend some business talks. Attend some talks about marketing. Try to figure out who those people are because guess what? We need each other. You need words to go on the website you built. I need to put words on a website, right? So we're made to go together like peanut butter and Hagenschla, right? <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't say jelly. I'm assimilating a little bit. So the thing is, the thing is that we are better together. Marketers need developers, developer needs marketers, and we need respect in order to have the empathy. And when we have empathy, we have acceptance, trust, loyalty, and then we actually have a community, not just this ethereal thing in the air, like an atmosphere holding in our oxygen, something you only realize you need when you're, um, in outer space because you tried to go to Mars and it didn't work out. Thank you. <laughs> oh, sorry. That was my call to action slide, but whatever. <laughs> Do we have any questions? We have a few moments. Before I invite people to ask questions, uh, I'm going to remind Bridget to case, um, repeat the question for the recording. And thank you so much for this talk. It was inspiring. You're and, welcome. Um, it can be behind. We all sometimes need to keep communicating. Oh, I was supposed to thank the Yost Diversity Fund for sending me here. Thank you. <laughs> so questions. Yes, please. Um, so I, uh, excellent talk, completely agree. I've seen a lot of people struggle to work out where to start. Like there's a lot of unknown unknowns. If you're a developer or a marketer, there are worlds of skills that you've never seen. You don't understand the terminology. Where do you get an overview of what the parallel skills and words and things are? So Jono is asking where you get the parallel skills. Like where do you even start? So I started by just going. And the thing is, is like, I was like, Oh my God, I'm going to go on Instagram right now. I have no idea what they're talking about. This is like, ah, you know, I felt so uh, ridiculous. Like my hair was uncomfortable. Like what is, what, what is, who's Jason and why does he need sleep? I can't understand this rest API thing. And I was just like, oh, uh, what are they talking about? And I'm just, I'm like panicking. I'm like looking at people like, who is the person? Who's the gray back? You know, who's the silver back? Like wh what is happening here? And then I realized, you know what? It doesn't matter. There's no test, right? So where you start is I'm a something is better than nothing person. So I say start somewhere. So if you don't have a business um, meetup, that's fine. But like maybe you have a friend that's a marketer. So a lot of times, because my friends are developers, Joan, they'll say, hey, Bridget, I have a question. You're a social media nerd. And I'm like, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, okay. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But what? Blah, blah, blah. Like you can start having that conversation. It's just about like we're meeting people. We're, you guys are meeting the smartest of each other. Like this is the opportune place. Like maybe if you already know about the REST API, don't go to that class. You know, go to the, go to something different. Don't go to the class at all. Go talk to somebody in the hall. Say, hey, I want to build my business. You know, how do I, what do I even start? Like, ask them. And then they, what they're going to do is ask you questions. Just like when you say, um, your client says, I want a website. That's awesome. What would you like it to do? 
what colors would you like? Do you have font pairings? How about a logo that isn't like in a JPEG? You know, do you, you know what I mean? Like, so you have to ask questions to get it out of each other. And then when you do that, you make relationships and then you're friends with people. It's kind of magic. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, so. Oh, sorry. So my question is, um, you're, you're an extrovert person, right? No. Uh, I have been feeling. <laughs> no, no. I'm absolutely not. This is a trained skill. Okay. I well would love to be in my room for the rest of the day, but I came like 20 hours just to be here, so I'm going to die when I go home. <laughs> so then my question is about easy. How, do you have tips for introvert people? Yeah. Do you have tips for introvert people? I have so many tips. I, am, I love Twitter with all of my heart, okay? And the reason why I love Twitter is because what makes me shy around people, because I will never walk up to any of you, just so you know, this is fine. I can do this all day long. We can, st we can no problem. I have lots of things to say. I will never walk up to you ever, 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 ever. It's just not, I, I know, I know, I'm working on it. I would rather die. Like I, I was proud of myself for like switching tables last night, okay? So usually I sit in a chair and then like, you can sit next to me and that's fine, we'll talk. But I'm not gonna go like, can I sit here? Like, okay, so, here, okay. Stop rambling. Here's the thing. Twitter. Twitter, you can craft your words. Twitter, you have no idea if people are looking. Oh, yeah. You, I love conversations where you're like, da 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 and they're like, Look, la, 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 la. Oh, oh, shoot, I really just want to talk to Jonah. And you can see their body moving away from you. You know, they, they, cause first you're like this, talking, 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 you're still awesome. And then you can see their bodies wanting to meet, leave, right? Cause I can see those cues. So and then I'm like, uh, whatever, blah, 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 whatever, it doesn't matter, uh, you know. But on Twitter, I can make those relationships and say like, it's really cool that you're into privacy and your Twitter account is also private. Right, right to be left alone. I mean, you know, but you're giving a public speak that's gonna be on the internet, but whatever. Like, you know, but we can have this conversation, right? I wouldn't say it to you in person. I, I said it to him on Twitter earlier, you know, so I can say it on Twitter, right? So a good tip is, and that's what I did is when I started going to work camps in 2013, I would just live tweet quotes. And then what would happen is speakers would come and talk to me. It's like, here, Bridget, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, thanks for tweeting on my thing. Blah, blah, blah. And then be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. and all of a sudden you're talking and Mike with Bluehost is your friend. I don't know. I didn't know he was a big deal. Like, what do I know? I don't know anything. I'm new. I'm brand new. I know nothing about because I didn't have enough time to observe, right? So an internet uh, tip is definitely Twitter and also take some breaks. I always tell people at WordCamps, do not go to every talk. Do not go to every talk. And WordCamps are getting better at that because there's more quiet spaces. So take some time to just chill out. We have another question? Well, can I make a remark on introverted people? That's a great book. A uh, remark isn't a question. You can make a remark on Twitter and say, hey, you should read this book by introverts. Is there a real question? Ask a question. Yes, sir. Ooh, how do I develop empathy toward the customers I don't have direct contact with? That is hard. And, and because you're not, you're not hearing the pain points, uh, unless you're in support. The support people know everything that's going on. And a lot of times support and marketing don't talk, but they totally should. Like, um, I really just wanted to have access to, um, Help Scout. Cause that would tell me everything I needed to write about on the blog. Uh, but c companies sometimes are siloed, so it is super difficult. Um, I don't, depending upon your agency, you could, you could ask. You know, it's like, like, I don't feel like I'm gonna build the right type of website unless we really know this person. Um, can you tell me more about them? Like, I know, um, Jen Miller would need someone to blog. Um, she's one of our sponsors here at this camp. She interviews her clients, right? But it's her agency. So that starts with her. It's top down. So it's sometimes it's the style, but it is tricky. 
So for me, I do research. So I do some, I write speaker bios for people. And what I do is I read your tweets. I read your LinkedIn. I read what people say about you on LinkedIn. And then I get a full picture of who you are. But it is hard if you don't have access. And that, that's, what, that's what I'm saying about the giant pandas. No, I mean, even if you go to San Diego Zoo, you have to be super quiet and you can only be there when they're out. You know, there's just sometimes you just don't have the access we want to be able to do the things we need. But if we, but if you ask, maybe your marketing team doesn't realize that that would actually help you do your job better. That's what I try to explain them. So uh, only after we started developing, uh, I heard that someone over there, uh, over the client, was blind. Now, and I thought, wow, that's 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 a lack of empathy right there. Because <laughs> this changes what I need to do. Then still, I said, now I need to develop empathy. But now the only one who are going to have contact with them were uh, people selling and, and, and uh, designing. I wasn't supposed to do that. It wasn't my goal. And you know, what would you say to such a uh, such a uh, outing? Right? What, what you say? What, yeah, what you said. You said. <laughs> There's a lot of other people hiring right now. Yeah. <laughs> XWP is hiring. Uh, Savvy, I think, is hiring. I'm serious, though. Like, in order to do your job well, and this is why it's so important to me, because I love you. I, developers are my friends. And you, in order for you to do the work that matters, you need to be able to have some freedom. You need to be respected. You need to charge more, but that's another talk. And then we need to be able to help each other, right? So it's very hard, and Simon Sinek talks about this a lot and Start With Why, but it's very hard to change culture from bottom up. I tried it in several companies. It doesn't work. Guess who I work for now? BridgetWillard.com. I, I mean, sometimes it, if it becomes that inhibiting to you, you might have to do some introspection and make some decisions, but it is really hard. And if you, if you say it, to me, I say to employers, you know what? You have the right to be wrong. And I have the right to work somewhere else. Do, do we have time for any more questions? Do we have any more questions? And tweet out that book. Yeah, go ahead. Men take for marketers, managers, whoever are more technical. Why don't they just create a fucking hell of a world page or program and then talk to the developers? Then you have the experience and then, yeah, you are already amazed that for uh, any other manager. Or, uh, are you asking why marketers don't create a program so that they can have a conversation with a developer? For now and then, yeah, if you write it and talk to other people, yeah. Why don't you get inside of it? Just do it a little bit. Okay, so why don't the question is why don't you do it so that you have the right to talk to people? You know, um, with love and admiration, I say that is a really arrogant way to go about it. But I have started Free Code Camp, and I'm into uh, applied accessibility now because, uh, and I, that's why I do go to the developer meetups. Because I don't think I should have to do what you do to be respected. And I don't think you should have to do what I do. That's the whole point of celebrating diversity. Celebrating diversity doesn't mean that we, we take each other's places. It means that we respect each other regardless of the differences in our roles. And so it, I'm not a developer, so it's, I don't feel that it's my right to tell you how to treat us. But I can talk to marketers and tell them that what I've done is what I outlined, which is attending developer talks, starting free code camp. I've done a lot of work way outside of my purview to earn the respect that I've had. I feel that it's unfair in a lot of ways, but as a woman, I've already had to do that in so many ways anyway, so I'm kind of used to it. That's life. So I'm for whatever's successful, and I have done that, and that's why I'm giving this talk. So that's the answer. I don't think that you should have to. I think that you should respect people for their skill sets. And um, also, earlier in the talk, I said marketing is technical. So, okay. uh, Wendy had a question? Yes, I do. Um, once you get to know the community and you start 
start blending in and you start using their words as your own, how do you keep your view fresh? So how do you keep your view fresh once you start assimilating? And that's the tricky part in a community that celebrates diversity. So what I mean, what I mean by um, using their words is, um, it's like you could, so I came here, right? So I want, did a little bit of Duolingo so I can learn some Dutch. And I'm really good at making Dutch people laugh at the horrible pronunciation. Um, but I did try, you know, I did that in Paris, I did that in Serbia, and it goes a long way for showing respect, is that I did try to say, good Morgan, you know, I totally screwed up, I love you, but your room will forgive me. Uh, Donkey Vell, I got a little bit sort of Nijmegen, you know, I mean, I'm trying, like, but it, but the thing is, like, if I talk to my friend Josh Pollock, I know that he really cares about the REST API. I don't have to know what that is exactly. But I know that if I find something about that, I'm going to ask Josh. So Josh, what do you think about this? Like, is it OK that it's unsecure? When is it going to be merged in the core? That kind of stuff. It's kind of like when I used to talk to my friends who are followed basketball. In our, in our town, it was about the Lakers. So I said, when is Kobe going to retire? Then basically, I'm in the conversation. Then they all start talking. I'm out. That's another introvert tip, by the way. Headlines. <laughs> Reed, Kobe's retired now, and, it does, and I'm not around basketball people anymore, so that doesn't work for me. But that kind of like assimilate enough that you can show that you're giving respect by trying, you know. And that, and I've found that that's been very true to me. Almost zero of my developer friends have um, ever talked down to me as some, as though I wouldn't understand what they're talking about, including Carl Alexander and all of these like super smart people like Felix. We've had great conversations, and he doesn't sit well. You wouldn't know what that is because you know you're just a marketer. And in fact, I, I tweeted out a joke. It's um, it's 11, it's 12 o'clock at night. I'm doing free code camp, drink, drinking a Hefweizen. Who am I? And like five people wrote, a badass developer. And I'm like, yeah. So, so um, Robert had a HTML5 sticker on that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to take that because I passed it in free code camp, right? So the thing is, it's like once you show that you're trying, you are totally accepted. And acceptance and assimilation are, um, Acceptance comes from the group, assimilation comes from the individual. So it's the two sides of the same behavior. Does that answer? How do you keep yourself? So I've. I have to, because you, you talked about Bob, of how to market to Bob. Yeah. But when you become like Bobish yeah. yourself, then marketing to Bob could be hard. It could be hard. It would be like how do you stay fresh? Yourself. Yeah, how do you stay fresh? So it is hard because I do lose myself in these personas. And as a social media manager, I do take on the persona of the brand. I take on the brand's voice, and I do lose my identity a little bit. So I'm in hectic days, even with Yvette, she's, I said, who am I? Who am I today? You know, it is hard because, but a fresh way is also talking to a new person. The new people are totally fresh. In fact, Morton gave a great talk at WordCamp Europe a few years ago about learning. And he said, hey, I, WordPress was easy 10 years ago when I learned it. It's not easy anymore. I don't know if it's easy. It was, I learned it 10 years ago. So you need to learn empathy for your users by learning something new. So he took ballroom dancing, right? So the perspective is in the learning. The, keeping it fresh is communicating with the new people. Like a third of the people raised their hand today that they're new to WordCamp. So you can ask them, what, like, what are you thinking about this? You know, um, because once you're in, you only see your own internal conflict with the silverback gorilla. So, um, hey, thanks guys for listening. I'm sorry we went late. I'm, I'm around. You can... I was just making sure that we didn't. Okay, but we, so... I'm on Twitter and I'm here and I'm always on Twitter no matter what the time zone is, so don't worry. <laughs> like when I go home, you can still talk to me. Thank you so much, Bridget. Donkey Vip.